Alrighty guys, so what you guys just saw there was my half inch end mill dropping out of my carousel. And that was during a tool change and that was totally unexpected. Uh, and because I, I dropped the tool and I chipped it, and not wanting to chip another one, I wanted to figure out and try and get to the root cause of why that happened, that way I can possibly fix it and then move on and keep machining. Cause this is actually, that, that clip wasn't intended to be, you know, recorded. I was actually recording the machining of um, the, what is this? Oh, this is the motor mount for the stepper motors that go on the, the lathe conversion. So I was doing that and then suddenly I hear this big clunk and see that my tool fell out of the, the carousel and uh, broke. So, what did I do? Well, I, I first said, oh crap, and there's something, something's wrong with the machine, and I don't know what. So, first thing I checked, which, you know, talking to other guys who have Fidel machines, was checking to make sure I had the right spindle um, force, or the, the drawbar force. So what I did, and this has been on my, my to-do list to get for a while. I just never really did it because I didn't really want to, you know, spend the money. But, you know, now came a situation where I, I kind of needed to know. And so I bought a drawbar force um, gauge from Mari Tool and stuck it up in there. And I got about, I think it was 800 or 900 uh, PSI. And also, in case you're wondering, this is what it looks like. It comes in a beautiful Pelican case. Nice and secure. So, and that, based on that, that 800 to 900, I think 800 is what the Fidel CNC guy said that it normally it sits at. And so, that wasn't an immediate indicator of what was wrong. Because I, I thought it was going to be, oh, there's super low pressure. We're not going to be able to, you know, do anything. Okay, immediately just go straight to draw bar, bevel washer springs, and just, you know, change it all out. So I decided to dig a little bit deeper and start going into, you know, piece by piece. I did, I did record some of that stuff, but it really wasn't quality stuff. And I decided now, since I've gone through it, I think I've figured it out. I'm just going to give you guys the abbreviated version and just the rundown of how I tore it all down. And then after that, we'll just start building stuff back up. So you can see that there's stuff missing up here on top. Normally you have that support structure right here and on top of that you have the cylinder which if you look over here i got both of them right here here's the cylinder which if you're looking right at the machine you normally see this this view and then here's that support structure right behind it there's the drawbar so if you're trying to get to this point or you try to get better understanding of how this machine all goes together you have a bunch of bolts on top of here um, on my machine I don't have I didn't have bolts in the back these two because guess what they don't have bolt holes so what I did took all these bolts out um, disconnected this quick connect and, and do also doing all this I also noticed that it did seem to struggle a little bit when actuating the tool, the tool change, um, using the tool in and out button. It seemed like it was struggling. I know that's more of a touchy feely kind of explanation, which I don't like because I like to go by data, but that's something I, I just observed. And so I also noticed that there's a leak back here around this fitting. There's a nylon washer, and I think this is a compression fitting, so you're not supposed to use thread tape, but that's what I had on hand and I just wrapped it a few times and um, cranked down on it and it stopped leaking there. And I also did notice that, excuse me, uh, that there was a small leak in one of these corners, I forget which one, but there's a small leak with the O-ring, which I have uh, bought a replacement, so I'll be doing that during this. Um, so that was one thing as far as air to hopefully fix any issues. And then wanted to dig down deeper to try and get to the drawbar. 
and just inspect things. I took off this upper support member, which also has a pneumatic connector on the back side here. And this wiring, which if you're at this stage and you haven't done this before, you might have to cut some zip ties because all this stuff up here is zip tied together. So I had to cut that stuff apart, unplug the connector, uh, disconnect the airlines, and then just take out these four bolts. And then this guy just comes right off of this direct support right here. So do that. And then you start to get closer to the draw bar, which this is my, my old one. Um, and in doing so, to get there, I'm going to try and... How can I show you guys? I'm going to leave it down here. I'm not going to climb up there. But basically... Actually, no. I will climb up there. Let's do it. Do it live! Alright. It's balanced. Alright. So on top here, you got... What I, I found was, it looked like there was just cork like stuck in all these threaded holes. But I took out these three so I could put in these bolts and use this. This is a puller for um, taking out the this top piece to allow you to bring the springs out and drop the draw bar. Oh, but before you get to this, you gotta take a extension. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a 3 extension and a piece of wood and basically you move your table over and you can align this, stick this up into the spindle to engage the bottom. First you, you put on, on this piece of wood and then you can engage this other part of the extension with the draw bar up here. So you, this is normally on the bottom of the, sticking out the bottom of the spindle. And so you stick your, I don't have enough hands. You stick your um, 3 extension to hit the bottom of that draw bar to push it up, which will then provide a positive support for this step where you take your puller, And then you put your bolts in there, and then you have this tool, which I'll, I'll put all this stuff in the description too. That way you guys know what to get or what to look for when you're doing this yourself. But basically this guy sits right on top of here. And then this, this of course would be inside of this hole. And so when you got this, this puller, attached here and you're pushing down there you're going to push down until you can get these half moon washers or i guess keys almost you can take those out because they'll be stuck up around the draw bar and if i get i'm going to put the camera down So it was a little bit stuck together. Basically, you get these guys out. And when I took these guys out, because they sit in this little corner, this is the draw bar. They sit in this groove in which that basically engages with the draw bar and kind of locks it into here. When you have the springs underneath it, it just clamps everything together. And I noticed, I think I don't think I can get it on the GoPro real clear, but I noticed there's, you know, maybe you can see it, but there's a lot of wear, or like, it seemed like it was just really compressed in there, and things are deformed in here. And these little half moon guys are a little bit deformed. And I also, trying to get that big, I'll say washer or spacer off. This guy was, it seemed like it, it didn't want to come off. And you can see it's a little bit uh, red, not red, but like there's been, there's been hit heat on the top. 
of this draw bar. I don't know when that happened, if the previous owner had it like that. You can also see it on the cylinder side. It's a little, uh, looks like it's got some heat on there. So I don't know if what that means. I know that means, you know, heat, of course, but I don't know when that happened. So, but basically you do all that, you compress that and you can pull out those little half moon pieces and then this top plate comes right off. And then once you're at that point, the draw bar is just supported by the extension on the bottom and you can then raise your Z axis up and just drop everything down. Uh, if you're trying to maintain all your components and pieces, you're gonna wanna cup the bottom of that because you got all you got six tiny ball bearings in there that fit inside the the draw bar. Which I have right here. So all those little tiny holes are what the, the bearings sit in. So I pulled this out, and I understand this is kind of ad hoc, and so it might be, I'm hoping you guys are following along. But you can see on the bottom of this, I'm turning it, I, I can see it, but I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but where the holes are, you can see it's kind of crowned up around. I don't know what, classifies as good or bad but visually that is not a smooth surface all the way around you can also see it's kind of been a little bit chewed up on the inside so i did that i noticed that and uh decided to dig a little bit deeper and looking at the drawing of the spindle for the a vmc 15 probably for all the machines but mine's VF, vmc 15 so that's what i've been looking at I pulled out the floater. What the floater does is it sits up inside the, the spindle and it actually goes around the draw bar here. And so when your cylinder pushes down on the draw bar, it engages it and it would stick out and allow a tool to come up and then it'll suck it back up and kind of this, this floater helps push those balls back out to then grow and grab the tool around the outside. I think also uh, Atman has also done a video on this and he, he I'll, I'll try and find it and link it in the description too, just as, as another resource for you guys to uh, look at. But so basically I, I took all that apart and I realized that I need to go just buy another um, draw bar and kit because this one looks pretty worn and I want to make sure I had good components and also talking to the Footall CNC guys, um, I think it was time. Uh, oh, and I also, I forgot to tell you, I pulled the springs out. So if I can do this one-handed, these are the bevel springs that sit between, I guess, the top of the spindle and the um, where this washer guy or spacer is on top. And that helps create that, that tension in the middle to help pull the, the draw bar up. And if you look, um, I, don't, I don't expect you guys to count it right now, but I have 47 springs on here. And that, looking at, or knowing that, and then going back to the drawing, I'll try and see if it's pulled up here. I have the manual pulled up on my computer. Yeah, so if you got the, the manual, I actually zoomed in on this. I'll try to do it now. Or well, actually, I don't have two hands, dang it. But I counted all of these springs, and there's 42 in here. But all CNC provides you documentation, and they say for a 7.5K spindle, depending on your spindle depth, which that's the... <coughs> I 
that's the depth of here measuring up until you hit there's a flat up there uh i think that's with the floater in there this guy but you measure that depth and depending on what it is this one says for seven and a half kw or seven and a half k spindle uh if your spindle depth is either four about 4.3 or 4.6 you have 44 or 47. so seeing that counting those i saw a discrepancy of you know what my number of springs was so i call, called football cnc explained the situation uh, i think it was brian at football cnc and he was he, he he's been doing working on this on these machines for years and he told me a little trick and I wanted to pass this on to you and I'm going to do it here after we're done explaining stuff. But basically when we put everything back together, put the draw bar back up, start putting springs down in. And if you guys uh, don't already know, they're supposed to be cupped. You can see here, I'll try and put it on the screen, but the bottom is supposed to be cupped down as far as the spring. And then everything above that is supposed to be pairs that are cupped together, paired all the way up until the top one, which is cupped up. Um, that's the general configuration it's supposed to be. But what Ryan at Vidal CNC told me was stack up your springs and you go up until you have one. I'll try and get back up here until you get to one right above the here. Whatever that is, um, is the number of springs that you're supposed to have. Or at least that, that, that over time he's found out that always amounts to the right amount of pressure um, for your spindle. So we're about to find out how much that is. So where would we go from here? Well, I'm gonna get my parts. I got my new draw bar. Here, it's still all wrapped up. Got a bunch of the kits. I got a lot of, I mean, all the bevel washers that I need, plus new ball bearings, and that new spacer that goes on top. I don't know if you guys can really see it, but let's see if we can squeeze it out of here. So this guy is all nice and brand new. So I got brand new components. I don't have to worry about wear or anything it also comes with grease to keep the balls in there and oh one one quick tip when you're pulling the floater out when you pull the draw bar out this guy's gonna be stuck up inside the spindle to take this out there's two ball bearings that are here and here and how you take them out is get yourself a magnet and just Stick it up in there, and then they should come right out. Actually, I'm going to put this guy over here. So that's a quick overview of at least my my status, and hopefully it's helpful for whoever else is going to possibly be doing this. And so now we're going to put everything back together. So I'm going to get my extension gonna put my new spindle together and or not spindle my draw bar and we're gonna put it back up there and we're gonna do everything in reverse so actually i'm gonna put my floater in first put the draw bar up and then put my springs on and then put that spacer and the little half moon pieces on. So I'm going to get the camera set up and then we'll just start getting to work. Before we start the rebuild footage of the spindle, I want to go over all the tools that I use. That way maybe it could benefit you guys um, when you're doing this. Uh, first thing up I want to share was the, the puller that Fidal CNC sells. This is also a uh, harmonic balancer puller. Uh, it comes with these cheap China bolts, uh, but I went out and replaced those with these grade eight bolts 
I think this might be two and a half inches long. I'll I'll, I'll measure this and I'll uh, I'll post it down below or even on the video. I'll tell you guys um, how long they are. So I did that. Um, 11 sixteenths socket. This, uh, of course, is helpful to drive a puller. Uh, as well as this tool from Fidal CNC. I'll put this number down below as well, um, as well as a link to it. This helps push down on the um, that spacer that goes on top of the drawbar. Um, that helps push down so you can you can get access to the half moon spacers, these guys. So that guy is helpful, of course. Uh, 7 16 bolt, or not a bolt, I'm sorry, a ratchet wrench. You know, these guy, this guy is for these bolts up here. It's really helpful to get all those. Just, you know, quick unscrewing of all those. As well as right below that, um, on this portion, on this bridge port, um, there's two bolts on either side that take a, what size is this? I have an eight, I don't know if you guys can see it, eight millimeter Allen. Uh, I forget what the, the standard size is of that, but I use that to take off those four bolts and takes that bridge portion off the top to allow you to get to everything you need to get to. Um, an assortment of small screwdrivers or maybe a pick like I have here, um, as well as a pair of small pliers and some snips. Uh, this is more of just getting, you know, maybe sometimes it's easier depending on if you got fat fingers or not to grab the the half moon. I can't even do it with one handed. Um, the half moon to get them up into here, uh, as well as the snips to, to cut zip ties for everything that was bundled up together. And then, of course, you got the magnet. This helps pull the ball bearings out of the floater. And then, of course, the flashlight. That's always helpful when you're trying to do stuff. A 3 8 extension. Uh, I think it's two foot. Easy Amazon buy. And then, what else? So I got a uh, pry bar. This is really just to get leverage um, for when I've got the puller up there, I just stick it between the two two bolts So when I'm tightening or loosening um, I can just hold it in position as well as a crescent in case you need it for anything I don't I think I might have just used it once or twice um, But these other tools should be able to do everything you need. So with that, let's uh, Let's show you how I rebuild everything Alrighty guys, so I have everything put back together. I got the bridge portion on here. I got the cylinder on here. 
Uh, don't be like me and forget to put your, your spring back on the top of the drawbar um, cylinder. Um, I got everything hooked back up, all the pneumatic lines back there and the, um, the wires. Everything is connected back up. Um, I got my force gauge on the ready. So let's go ahead and oh, I've actually also tested this real quick to make sure things actuate. Um, but let's go ahead. I'll get you guys set up. We'll look at the spindle. And then here we go. Moment of truth. Oh wait, hold on. He stop off. And then here we go. We are riding at at 900 pounds of force. So that should be good. I think uh, based on what my, my knowledge is and talking to other guys with uh, Fidel Machines, uh, we are right in the ballpark of where we need to be. So hopefully that, that's a helpful video for you guys. I don't know if I told you, but I ended up putting 47 springs uh, up in here. Uh, that's of course an, an odd number. So the first one is cut down and then with the pairs, Going up to the top, the it's uh, a pair at the very top and not one that's cupped up. Um, that's also aligning with what they have on here. So with that, hope you guys enjoy this video or hope it, it's you know some insight, some kind of behind the scenes or helpful video for you guys if if you need to, if you needed to to know or see the uh, the insides of the machine because you needed to do it as well. Um, if this video, you know, deserved it, please feel free to uh, give it a like. Um, if I've earned it, uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I like doing this kind of stuff. I like doing teardowns, rebuilds, and showing you guys, you know, what goes into what you have as far as a, you know, machine here or on the CNC lathe stuff that I've been working on. So hopefully this is helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And with that all done, now we're gonna get back to actually machining and not drop any tools and uh, finish up this uh, CNC lathe build. So with that, hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys next time.